I really appreciate that. And um, Yolanda, please welcome Cristina, Cristina Rojas, please welcome. ¿Qué tal? Thank you. Please take a seat. It is a pleasure for me. Pleasure for me also. It is a pleasure for me to, to have uh, all of you here. And uh, it is, um, uh, well, the, the name of the session is the luxury destination, the culture, the catwalk to success. And it can be uh, something strange, maybe, to be talking about fashion industry and uh, the cat shows, uh, the, the catwalks. In, um, in a luxury travel conference. But um, after that being said, uh, let me, uh, I want to um, request you some brief introduction about yourself. Everybody knows, of course, Bertigas. Everybody knows um, IFEMA, of course. But uh, we got one minute, two minutes to, uh, for you to introduce yourself, your company to the audience, please. Mm, hi, nice to stay here. Thank you for inviting me uh, and the brand, of course. Um, I would say that I only work in my life for luxury. Uh, I start with 24 years old in Loewe, uh, just to do a brief and save money and go for travel to around the world. And uh, finally, I stay there uh, eight years. So luxury trapped me and uh, I stay there and uh, I decide that was my, my um, line. I followed that line and then I changed to, I moved to Hermes uh, and I stayed there 11 years. <laughs> uh, That's a my, last, my, last, uh, my last job was um, retail, um, retail director for Spain and Portugal, but I had also an experience in, in the whole Europe and I have a, a knowledge on the, on the European market and the Middle East. Then, uh, this is my last uh, position, I joined uh, the group G Alfer, which is a, a Spanish uh, group based on Galicia and owns uh, three brands made in Spain, all the three ones. The first one is uh, Portegas, uh, for who I'm here today. The second one is Jorge Vasquez, which is a Spanish uh, designer. And then the third one is Viriato, which is a, a mainly focused on network brand. Um, Produced in our factory uh, in Galicia. It's quite a few. So that's yes, luxury in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree in that um, in that topic of uh, luxury is, is, is engaging. <laughs> and Yolanda, please, uh, everybody knows, of course, um, uh, Ife Madrid. But uh, can you please tell us a little more of this specific project? Of course, sure. So uh, I'm in charge of Madrid Turismo by FEMA. It is an initiative uh, launched to do the positioning of Madrid uh, in the long haul market. We do it on behalf of the city council and the region of the government of, of Madrid. Uh, until one year ago, this was done separately. The city council did it on one hand and the government on the other hand. So it was a request uh, to do this together so that it's more efficient and we can have like a bigger impact in those markets to position Madrid properly and to have a big communication campaign. So they chose IFEMA to do so because it is a public company where they have both a um, uh, partnership and they have been founders since the very beginning. And it, has, it provides the transparency and the legitimacy to manage those funds that come from both institutions. And that's what we do since one year ago. I'm the director and I work very closely with the larger IFEMA team. And you know that IFEMA has a, a great in, a engagement with fashion through the uh, Mercedes-Benz Mercedes yes, uh, Madrid course. Fashion Week since many, many year, years ago. The, this initiative started in 86, no, sorry, in 85, and it started to be in IFEMA in 96. So they have a lot of experience uh, regarding uh, fashion, luxury, and now tourism, of course. Oh, thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's start from the very beginning um, because we are in a luxury travel conference and I want to ask you, um, what is for you, since you have been traveling around the world for years, what is for you a luxury destination? 
You want me to start? <laughs> Let's go. Please go. Uh, I see it from the perspective of what we do. is what we have to offer to the, those potential visitors from the Americas, the Middle East, and Asia, in our case, that are looking um, for a place to visit in Europe. Normally, when they come to Europe, they go to, different, uh, to various uh, destinations in the same trip. And what they're looking for right now, and I think this is a common element, because we have now a psychographic profile that it is the same. You have this um, target that lives in large cities and have common education. And, and what they're looking for is something that is immersive. They want to try, um, I mean, I'll give you an example. Now we're trying to position not only the city, but also the surroundings, the region, because that's a very strong value proposition in, to be able to compete with other Western European capitals. Because in those other cities, it takes longer to go from the city center to something that is outside and where you can have a picturesque little town or, or castle or a winery. And here in Madrid, not many, many people know in the long haul that there are a lot of wineries, for instance. Yeah. And when I was explaining this in Thailand, I said, you can go there in the morning and visit several wineries. And in the afternoon, you will have a wonderful lunch in a very sophisticated place in Madrid downtown. They were quite impressed. I was surprised to see that's something I, I really like myself, but I, did, I wasn't sure it was the right uh, uh, product. They enjoyed really small wineries. They don't have to be sophisticated. What they enjoy is talking to the owner. And we have some passionate, very passionate owners over here explaining what they do. That's what they are looking for. And they want something that they, I mean, they want to go probably to a fancy place where they can eat well or something. I mean, I think the, the, the word here is uh, quality and immersion, but they want to do it, they want to do what the, the, the locals do. And that's also another strong value proposition we have because people in Madrid know how to live well. The yeah. lifestyle is excellent. So enjoying a place where you have that and you can do it among the locals, that's really what they're looking for. And I'm not saying anything new because that has been said, I think, in every panel we have listened to this morning. And so look, luxury in this case is composed of many different elements. For me, then again, is a immersion and a distinctive element, something they cannot find any other, in any other place. And with regards to fashion, I think we also can compete in that regard because there are many local brands, artisans, and uh, elements um, that you can buy that you cannot find uh, anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we have to showcase, and that's what we're trying to do yeah. with our communication campaign and the creative assets we are uh, um, now producing, yeah. it goes in that direction. I think now we have the right elements in Madrid, and that's yeah. why it's working totally so well. And it's a real discovery. It is not for the for the Americans, of course, but yeah. for in the case of Asia and the Middle East, it is really top of mind. And I think it's going to be, I mean, part of their next trips, uh, surely in the in the very near future. And what about you, Christina? As a outsider of uh, the travel industry, but um, a very traveled woman. I'm, I'm, I'm quite uh, convinced uh, that right now the luxury uh, travelers are quite mature in, in uh, luxury goods. I mean, they know by heart what they want to buy. But, and they are looking for something that uh, can um, surprise them. Yeah. Like we need to motivate that um, appetite to um, invest in luxury goods, Spanish luxury goods, through that kind of um, show them what which is not the normal one. So I used to call them unexpected um, experiences. Yeah. We have a lot. Fortunately or not, they don't know many of Spain, only the flamenco and tapas and yeah. a little touches of, uh, of the gastronomy like uh, wines or, or jamón ibérico. If we are able to surprise them with that kind of um, artisanal uh, heritage we have right now in our country, um, we will succeed. 
but we are not doing well, I think. Uh, yeah. They don't know. We have uh, wonderful leathers in the south of Spain, wonderful leathers in the north. Uh, we have artisans that are spend their whole life doing that, but we, cannot, we are not able to communicate, to go through the barriers, the, 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 the borders, and to, 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 to go in depth them. Uh, right now we are selling tourism really well. I, I will say that I'm surprised with the, the kind of investment the big uh, groups of, uh, of uh, orals are doing in Madrid, but we need to take advantage in fashion to create that kind of alliances, alliances, unexpected alliances that right now doesn't exist. When I go to Paris for the Fashion Week, I saw it everywhere. Uh, but we, don't, we, we have everything like them. We have fashion, we have culture, we have artisans, we have uh, luxury goods, but we need to put everything to... To, to, to put our little pieces of the puzzle yes, together. Yes, the puzzle together, yeah, yeah. to can communicate in a good way. Yeah, totally agree. And uh, talking about Paris, um, if I, let, let's play the, the following game. Because I was thinking uh, some time ago, uh, when I asked it, um, which are the most relevant or the top uh, luxury destinations in terms of urban uh, destinations, not mm, beach destinations? Um, for you, which are them? The, the top five luxury destinations in the top of mine and almost everybody here. Talking about Europe or uh, the world? In the world. Paris. Egypt. One is Paris, no question about that. Mm -mm. The second will be London, mm -hmm. of course, New York, mm -hmm. Milan, and probably Tokyo. Mm -hmm. These are five, the most, uh, the, the top five destinations, luxury destinations in the world. Okay, we got five. And, um, and for me, you are the specialist here. Which are the top five uh, fashion shows in the world? Those ones, same. same the same place. one. We got the fashion show of Paris, the fashion show of London, mm -hmm. New York, Milan, and of course Tokyo. Is that a coincidence? It is not. It is not? No, it is not. It is because they, they are able to convert. Every, everything is organized around the event. I mean, the fashion show is an event in the city. When you go to the fashion show, all the brands are fully merged in the Fashion Week. They, are, they, they do windows, special windows for the event. The city is completely refurbished to be online what we are, they are communicating and yeah. during that week. And that is the part that we are not doing. We are on the way. If Emma has helped a lot, I, I see things that I didn't see I'm, since uh, 25, uh, 27 or so almost uh, years working in the fashion, uh, luxury fashion industry. And for the first time, I know, I feel that there is a, a, a synergy between uh, the organization, institutions, uh, and, and the brands. Yolanda. It is not a coincidence because those are vibrant cities, open cities that attract a lot of talent. So here the question is, what's first, the chicken or the egg? Hmm. It is because of those people that get together in big cities because cities are spaces of freedom where very special people get, get and gather because that's where they can develop their careers and, and you know, have a, a future. And in, in every of those cases, if you attract the right type of people, you will have a similar result because you will see that in fashion, but you will see it in culture, you will see it in art. You will see it in astronomy, you will see it in finance, you will see it in every area, in every sector, because those are also the big capitals for all the rest. So when you have talent and you have those profiles, that happens. It happens in everything, in fashion and in everything else. And that's probably why Madrid is getting positioned now. Because what's Madrid now? That it wasn't the case 10 years ago. Hmm. Madrid is an open city mm -hmm. that attracts talent where there are opportunities, mm -hmm. that is truly cosmopolitan. Those cities are cosmopolitan, they are not provincial. And when a city belongs such a space that provides opportunities, that happens. So that's a synergy 
uh, that's going to be given by the opportunities provided by those cities. Because there are wonderful cities around there, but they, they won't have the same vibe. They won't be as cosmopolitan, they won't, won't be as open and as free as those ones. So I think that's the key element here. And I think that's what you need to incentivize. That's that sort of ecosystem to attract that type of talent that thinks out of the box and is looking for new, new opportunities. And I think you will have even like the, the best version of that when those different areas merge. Yeah. And that's what tourism provides. It's one of the elements that provide that uh, opportunity to get this combination of different activities with the same focus. When you merge things, innovation happens. And that's, I think, what you need to, to provide. And uh, probably the fashion shows and uh, the fashion industry is the trigger for, mostly for inspiration, for the main steps, for the, for the first steps of the traveler journey, inspirations and planification but mostly inspiration, right? Um, fashion and fashion shows and the people attending these shows and the firms and the companies attending these shows with, uh, that's, uh, with such great events happening in, in, in the town are of, um, a source of inspiration for not only the, the travelers but uh, all the, the people around the world that are watching these shows on Every, every day on TV, on the news, happening in the news, uh, right? It's, it's all about inspiration, right? And, and communication, because it happens in Madrid, but I think, I don't know if it if it's go, go away. Uh, when you do the fashion shows in, in uh, doing the catwalk, I don't know if the platform allows to uh, send the information and to arrive to another areas that are not in the local ones. I mean, uh, going ahead, like, for example, the Middle East, the, that kind of country with a r high potential of investment. And I'm not sure if we are right there. I think it's twofold, you know, because of course people get inspired by those shows, by fashion in general and what happens around it. But fashion designers get inspired by everything that happens. I think it's where, where you see the trends. I mean, they, they get the trends faster than anybody else. And they get information from all over the place, from the street, from politics, from art, from everything else. And then that's, that becomes something else through fashion, and then you inspire other people. Yeah. So it is, it is an amazing communication element. And in our case, it is a key element in, in the tourism product. And it's also crucial for for uh, positioning because shopping tourism and everything that happens around fashion yeah. is one of the main drivers and the main elements when somebody is looking for a place, it's particularly a in effort. a big city. Yeah. 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 And um, on the last conversation with uh, Beatriz de Orleans, we, 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 we were agree and uh, the Spaniards, we the Spanish people, um, are globally renowned for being uh, very creative people, very creative. And uh, in, in the previous uh, roundtable session, Sandra and Francisco, and of course, uh, Juan talked uh, about our creativity that triggers the innovation and, and all the things, but okay, we are creative people. We do have artisans, Hatman's uh, craft. What, what else do we need? to reach that top level in terms of not only fashion, uh, but fashion shows? You to go ahead, to go outside Spain and to be well known outside. That's the question. To believe in us, you mean. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my answer. Yeah, no, I, I believe, trust me. in our potential, trust in our artisans. The artisan uh, and the fashion that are created by artisans in other countries like Paris or Milan, um, uh, they trust in them. It is a profession. Here it is not. Uh, you cannot study to be an artisan. You have to be in a uh, fabric to be uh, transformed into an artisan. Then, for instance, in Hermes, the artisan that, that, 
that made the, the handbags study for I don't know how many years yeah. In, yeah. The, in the school. But then when they get into Hermes, they do another internal school for be an artisan. And I think that is something that is not happening in Spain. Uh, we have incredible artisans that are doing our, for instance, our collection of uh, high um, uh, craftsman um, uh, leather goods collections in Spain. And they are doing by themselves. So they, they, they didn't study that. They don't yeah. have any title that accredit uh, them as artisans. So if we're, I don't know, if it's a matter of fact of uh, being more present in the institution or, or uh, as academic uh, titulations, but we need to promote the artisan uh, profession. Of course. And that promotion um, needs investment. Of course, as any a other. huge investment. Not so huge. It's, a, it's like a, to create a new uh, because degree. Because the luxury, I mean, the, the luxury brands are, are of course, well, well baked by um, largest company in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it needs uh, money. And th they need to, to be uh, to be more uh, to have more consideration uh, as artisans. Uh, for instance, in Paris and in Milan or any other country in Europe, the artisans are an institution. I mean, yeah. in the company, they take part of everything. So uh, are the cœur. In French, they used to say the, the cœur of the cœur. So are in the middle, are centric. Uh, and the strategy is to um, uh, do what they know. They know how they are based on the leather or in the stitching or whatever and they, they, they build everything around the, the, the expertise yep. of each artisan. And here is the, the inverse. So we are doing as, as we want, and we ask them to do magic sometimes that they cannot. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it's a matter of fact of, uh, of uh, profession professionalize that, uh, that um, artisans and, and make it more visible to take profit of that um, of that um, um, profession and uh, to pump her up yeah. the, 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 the leather goods uh, yeah. uh, and, and Yolanda, you, you know the house, so uh, what are doing the um, Paris, and London and these top five fashion shows? What are they doing so well, better than us? I think there are two elements or, or related to what you just said before. I think there are two critical elements. One is collaboration, the other one is communication. Yeah. And other cultures maybe do that better than we do. Hmm. We have seen that in so many areas. We have seen that with the olive oil. I mean, we produce a lot of olive oil, but others do the branding much better than we do. This, this branding activity is not something we have been good at. Yeah. We are good at the product. But do we communicate well enough? Do we collaborate enough among us? Because all this needs a business model behind to be sustainable. It's more, when you said before, money, it's, I think it's more a question of a business model that works out than a question of money. Because if you have the right business model, you will find the, the money. And I think that's something that is not part of our culture. And many of these collaborative models are very recent and strange to us. People need to be together. It requires leadership. And it requires a short and long-term perspective. And that's something that also many times lacks because people are looking for something that is short-term. So if you add everything up, you will have something that will last and will be powerful enough. I think we have the right uh, I mean, uh, fashion designers, uh, people with the right skills, to, um, people highly educated. It is a question of adding these uh, extra elements that are lacking. And of course, uh, they have done that longer than we have. But that doesn't mean anything, because when we get to something, we happen to do it very well. So I think it's just a question of, of, of getting organized. We now see, this is an example, the Madrid Turismo by FEMA, of public-private collaboration with a, mo a governance model that is really working out very well in practice. That can be applied to many other fields. And if you have a public-public, public-private 
um, collaboration model and we have the people getting uh, cooperating, that should work much better than it does right now. Totally. So uh, we are running out of time. Uh, I got one last question. Uh, but from your side, is there any topic you want to address now? Or just the, uh, my final question is, so to, to sum up the conversation, since we have the, the travel industry here, how can the travel industry help the fashion industry to move it forward and to help to position the destination Madrid in that case? that is better for us. It's a clear win-win. What can we do for you? I think that you, all of you are, 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 are key uh, actors in our business. Why? Because the mix of local customers is super important. But with that, with the actual uncertainty in, on economy, our business model is uh, changing continuously. And we are trusting and trying to arrive much more than ever uh, to uh, foreigner people. Why? Because they have uh, potential of buying, they have, they, they nourish us with uh, new uh, needs, because uh, we used to say that the luxury is not a need, but for them it's a need. Uh, they want to be dressed in cashmere, they want to have a wonderful coat uh, made in silk, and they nourish our, our um, creative uh, departments with that um, uh, new uh, needs that we don't experience in the past. We are trying to uh, um, change from the local is important, of course, they are always here and we need to take care of them, but we need to go ahead and to arrive them. Why? Because they are the open door for us to invest in new countries. Uh, we are uh, focusing on all of them and even our strategy plans are always uh, the foreigners. Right now Madrid is a, is a new place for luxury, um, thanks to you, uh, thanks to, 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 to your investment and to trust in the, in the city. And we are discovering that customers with uh, nationalities that has never bought in our stores are coming right now. Now it's a, it's a matter of fact of um, create alliances. Uh, so I'm a, a fan of the alliances. We need to uh, receive your customers to increase their, their experience, to surprise them all together and create a community of collaboration that will help, um, of course, to any, anyone. And Yolanda, you have the privilege me, to be in the both sides. For me, it's product development, the critical element. Uh, fashion and shopping needs to be part of the value chain in a much more consistent way. We have some examples, such as the, atelier, the route for the atelier, ateliers that recently launched, where you can go and visit uh, the ateliers of the fashion designers. That has to be done at a larger uh, scale, and it mm -hmm. has to be, uh, we have to create much more product in which fashion and designers and artisans are part of the experience, of this immersive experience where we were talking at the beginning. If that's done at a larger scale, not only in the city, but in the surrounding areas of the region, that can be extremely successful. They can provide, tourism could provide a lot more opportunities to these people along the value chain, and they would, of course, have a more sustainable uh, business model. Mm -hmm. Because they are, they are so, so sensible to the, to the offers, uh, and if, at the orders, they propose them to be in touch with a fashion brand they don't know, they will love it. They, they, they are uh, on the mood to discover new things and to discover new experiences and to be surprised. Uh, so that's why I, I, I feel that all of you are, are absolutely uh, important for us at this point in this moment and with this scenario of crisis and all that economic uh, uh, issues we have right now. We cannot live uh, in the future without you, with your help and with your influence. You attract them, and we are here to can collaborate. Uh, it is a successful, uh, as the modern used to say right now, it's a synergies. perfect match. Yeah, 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 synergies. <laughs> well, uh, the good news here is that um, I, I've been talking with Hector, uh, general manager of Tourism Madrid yesterday, and told me that uh, the ILTM, um, all of you know, that it's the, um, probably one of the most relevant um, travel conference, luxury travel conference 
in the world that is happening the, the next week, if I'm not wrong. And um, they were developing some kind of show, uh, an after party, you know, side event, events with uh, a local Madrilian uh, fashion designer, that is Maya Hansen, really famous in the world because they designed, she designed uh, Corpiños, Corps, mm -hmm. for uh, Lady Gaga or Beyoncé, between others, so it is uh, internationally renowned. So it seems that we are on track. So, uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Christina. My uh, pleasure. Yolanda. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. thank you so much. Thank you.